Table Mountain Myths and Legends The Story of Mlindi Wemingizimo According to African legend, Tiko, the god of the sun, and Jubela, the earth goddess, conceived Kamata, who created the world. But the great dragon of the sea was so jealous that he fought Kamata to try and stop him from forming dry land. In the battle, Kamata was badly crippled, but the earth mother, Jubela, came to his aid by creating four mighty giants to guard the four corners of the earth. Jubela placed the biggest and strongest giant at the gateway to the south, where Cape Town now lies. After many terrible battles with the dragon of the sea, the giants were killed one by one, but before they died, they requested that the earth mother turn them into mountains so that even in death, they could guard the world. So the greatest giant of all, Umlindi Wemingizimu, became Table Mountain, the watcher of the south. Table Mountain Myths and Legends, the legend of Umlindi Wemingizimu, there's another rather strange legend that the local people tell about the Cape Peninsula and it goes like this. In the beginning, the world was created by Kamata, but in Yangamba, the great sea dragon tried to prevent Kamata from creating dry land. This did not go down well with Jubela, the one-eyed earth goddess. So, to help Kamata complete the job, Jubela created four giants, one to guard each of the compass points of the earth. After many battles, the giants were eventually defeated, but before they died, they asked Jubela to turn them into mountains so that they could complete their task. Jubela agreed, and one of these giants became Mlindi Wemingizimu, the Watcher of the South, otherwise known as Table Mountain. Table Mountain Myths and Legends, the story of Van Hunks and the Devil. As the story goes, Van Hunks would sit beneath the same tree at the top of Devil's Peak each day, smoking a special kind of herb that only he could smoke without falling ill. One day, he arrived to find a stranger sitting in his spot. The stranger was a youngster, and Van Hunks challenged him to a competition to see who could smoke the most of the special tobacco before falling ill. The youngster accepted, and the two lit their pipes and smoked from dusk till dawn. A crowd of locals gathered at the bottom of Table Mountain, wondering what the curious tablecloth-like cloud that had formed along its flat surface was. On top of the mountain, Van Hunks and the youth continued to smoke their pipes, and when the youth went forward to cough, his hat fell off his head, revealing a pair of horns protruding from his forehead. Van Hunks was startled, realizing that this was indeed the devil that he had challenged and won against. Upset at being beaten, the devil created a clap of thunder and made both him and Van Hunks disappear. Now, when Table Mountain's tablecloth creeps over the top of the mountain, locals can be heard whispering that Van Hunks and the Devil are at it again. Table Mountain Myths and Legends, the story of Adamaster, the Untamed Titan. Once upon a time, so long ago that not even Greek gods had been born, the sages tell us that the earth and the sky gave birth to twelve titans. These were fierce and violent creatures with bodies as big as mountains and had monstrous features. They could demolish forests by shaking the earth and drown islands with gargantuan waves, and out of sheer cruelty they laid waste to the planet for sport. One of these titans, Kronos, had several children with his wife Rhea. These were the Greek gods, among them Zeus, Hades, Demeter, and Poseidon. For ten years, Zeus and his siblings fought against the Titans, and in the end, with the help of the one-eyed Cyclops, the Titan was defeated. Most of the Titans were sent to Tartarus, a fiery underground prison, but some met different fates. Atlas was sent to North Africa, where he would hold up the sky on his shoulders. Helios, who had not participated in the war, drove the chariot that pulled the sun around the earth. One of the titans was called Adamaster, and he had fallen in love with the nymph, Thetis. As punishment for coveting the nymph and for his rebellion against the gods, Adamaster was turned into a jagged mountain at the southernmost tip of Africa, and therefore he forever lay as Table Mountain. Table Mountain Myths and Legends, the story of the God Tree. Many moons ago, when the land was dark and light was still pending existence, the stories of old tells us that Tiko, the god of life, created seeds which he spread throughout the oceans of the earth, this before the creation of dry land. The seeds, fertilized by his wife Jabela, sprang out of the waters of the ocean, towering into the heavens. 
The trees created siege and slowly spread over the earth, eventually creating dry land and in turn, creating life. Ocean creatures gathered and rejoiced at these creations as they provided a source of sustenance for life on earth. Some of these creatures stayed while others saw the trees as intrusive and then one of them, the great dragon of the sea, Nyangama, in order to preserve his way of life, waged war against the gods, vowing to cut down each tree with his tail. One after the other, Nyangama cut down the god trees until there was only one left. Tiko then tossed his son Kamata to create more dry land in order to protect the last living trees, and Kamata took to the earth immediately, starting with his creations. However, by the time that he reached the last god tree, it was already too late. He arrived in time to watch it fall. The thunderous tree trunk sparked and fell and the god trees were no more. The last tree, however, situated deep in the south, was enchanted with teak of life force and when it fell, the land created by Kamata sprang into life as the seeds and branches covered the southern tip of Africa, spreading out into the rest of earth. And this sparked the beginning of life, creating creatures and beings resembling the creator. The roots of the tree still runs deep into the earth and the remnants of the stump can still be seen today as Table Mountain. Table Mountain Myths and Legends, the story of the light beings. Throughout history, apparitions of light beings have been noted to shimmer across the Cape Town cityscape and have been described as shimmering and wave-like layers of energy that dazzle the eyes. Locals have confirmed seeing these beings and agree that given the right time and place, you may well be able to see them for yourself. According to the ancient philosophy of Feng Shui, Cape Town hosts the perfect properties to allow light beings to be seen in this form. This is because of its auspicious configuration in the shape of an armchair. The table mount protects the rear, while lion's head and devil's peak act as armrests. The city itself sits in an energy fog bowl and the wealth creating properties of the waterfront and Robin Island serve to slow down the key before it hits the land, making Cape Town the ultimate Feng Shui city. Table Mountain Myths and Legends, the story of Kamata. The most prominent god amongst the Kosa speaking people of southeastern Africa is Kamata. He is the creator and protector of heaven and earth and is the all knowing and omnipresent god in the third dimension. In the second dimension lives the ancestors, who cease to be in the physical realm and are guardians of humans living on earth. It's believed that during their existence in the physical world and by the instruction of Kamata, ancestors created spiritual entities that would be responsible for guiding human life on earth. Humans may not see them, but they appear spiritually, in dreams, or a chosen person sees them in the day. They appear in forms of figures humans can physically recognize. A mantis, fish, snake, lion, bee. These entities exist separately from the creatures which they possess and have a clear identity of their own. Their intended existence was not only guidance, but also a form of communication between the physical and spiritual realms. In return, humans identifying as part of the Kosa tribe would then perform a spiritual ritual as confirmation that the message has been received the necessary steps have been taken and also to receive the blessings which Kamata has given. The cause of symbolism for Kamata is the sun as it represents the cycle of life from birth to adulthood to death and rebirth in African spirituality. The symbolism of Kamata is a depiction of the power of the African spiritual imagery on the human mind and the consciousness of the Kosa people. The image inspires the conception that Kamata created all things is all-powerful and is all-knowing. Table Mountain Myths and Legends, the story of the Khrotslang. Wisdom Keepers records the Khrotslang to be as old as existence, crafted by the gods themselves in the early times of creation. This giant primordial creature would prove to have been a terrible mistake as they filled it with tremendous strength, cunning and intellect. The gods, then realizing what they did, tried to split the creature into two smaller animals, elephants and then the first snakes. However, one of the original Khrotslangs escaped the gods. Hiding in the cave, now known as the bottomless pit, it continued to live and breed, creating more of its kind. It would lure elephants into the cave to feed itself and its little ones. According to more local legends, living in the deep caves of Africa is what drives the serpent to covet mystical gems and diamonds. 
This last of gems curves the creature's cruelty and dark nature, leaving bargaining room for its victims to gain their freedom from certain death. The most recent recorded sighting was in 1917, where foreign looters were attacked and disappeared on their attempts to navigate the bottomless pit for treasure. Locals blamed the Chlorotslang for the disappearance, which was rumored to have dragged a lion down the pit just weeks before. Most of the other significant sightings report the creature attacking from deep waters of rivers with few people surviving the encounter. Some gave details of a large wave rushing towards their boats before swallowing them down into the water. Other reports from explorers in 1910 say the creature emerged from the wave, raising its massive head 8 meters into the air before attacking them. Many people have tried to rationalize the possible explanations for the numerous reports of slightly different creatures, one being a rock python, another a water monitor lizard, or even an unknown species of dragon hybrid. Although these are all good theories, none have been proven, leaving locals to go on fearing the dreaded Chlotzlang and its greedy need for the mystical gems Africa holds. Table Mountain Myths and Legends, the story of Gonab. In Kuku mythology, Gonab is said to be the spirit of death. In stories of old, Gonab disguised as an old traveler visited a village that had experienced a drought with the intention of taking the dying villagers to the underworld. While visiting one of the village elders who was on his deathbed, he was recognized by a village warrior named Tu Goab, who immediately challenged Gonab to a battle of strength. The rules were simple. If Tsui Gohab won, Gonab would stop the drought. If Gonab won, instead he would claim the lives of all the villagers, both living and dead, including Tsui Gohab himself. Gonab agreed to the challenge and they both wrestled one another for seven days and seven nights. On the last day, Tsui Gohab won the challenge to Gonab's dismay. Enraged at the result, Gonab ended up breaking Tsui Gohab's knees at the end of the fight. Nevertheless, Gonab honored the deal, however he was unable to directly stop the drought since it was not under his domain so instead, he asked the other gods to make Tsui Gohab a rain god instead. After Tsui Gohab recovered from the injury he received from Gonab, he discovered his newfound powers and was able to call upon the rain to fall not only on his village, but on the villages of his descendants that are still alive today. Table Mountain Myths and Legends The Theory of Adam's Calendar Adam's Calendar is a series of stones believed to be the oldest man-made structures on Earth. The ancient circular monolithic anchors predate the other structures on Umshlamba by over 75,000 years. This mysterious calendar has signs of technology as it remains accurate as a calendar following the shadow of the setting sun cast on the central monolith onto a flat calendar stone next to it. Locals also know this place as the birthplace of the sun, a place where I suspect the god of light received his energy. So now that we have an understanding of the oldest calendar in the world, the concept of its only use being to track the lunar cycles would seem a waste of technology. So I started looking at concepts of ancient city ruins being culturally rebuilt in Africa. In doing so, I am introducing a city concept I call Al Kubulon. Only a few would know the meaning of the name. My concept being that years ago, before the times of the floods, we were people of unthinkable spiritual energy and technologies, and Adam's calendar was more than just a calendar. It connected an advanced race to celestial energy, preserving a culture that we will strive to discover even today.